Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this Titan Precise Fit EDC belt from the company Next Belt. Next Belt is a company that I was able to cover their booth at SHOT Show 2022. They did an absolutely fantastic job in their presentation. I got to talking with their representatives and thought it would be a great opportunity to actually take a look at one of their products in close up detail. So again here, this is the Titan EDC belt. This has their precise fit ratcheting technology. It's similar to other ratcheting belts that you've seen probably in the past, but with a little bit of a difference and we're gonna get into all of that. So what we're gonna do when we come back, I'm gonna get this out. We're gonna take a look at it in detail, get this fit so that I can put it into good use. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Next Belt who did provide this for review. Now, ratcheting belt technology, it's certainly not proprietary to Next Belt, but they've kind of tried to take it to the next level in a number of different ways. Now, if you've been watching my channel and something that for me has really become an integral part of my everyday, a ratcheting belt, which I do greatly enjoy. This one here happens to be some of the competition to Next Belt. This is Core Essentials, who's really at this point given me a great understanding of how awesome a ratcheting belt can be. So we're going to compare this just a little bit, wrap in some competition here so you can see what Next Belt is doing next to one of their probably biggest competitors, Core Essentials. But I can tell you, Next Belt doing a fantastic job, just beautiful, beautiful belts. So with that, we're going to flip the camera around and let's get into this Titan in detail. And so the first thing that caught my attention when this was sent to me, the presentation is just beautiful, literally right out of the box. This nice little bag, just very nicely done. Their logo, that's cool. You can see how it's sort of fabricated in that shield with a couple sort of handguns. It just has that real cool look, that real neat feel to it. I like good quality presentation. I've said it on my channel a number of times. I don't always care about packaging, but when the packaging looks good and they're paying attention to the details on the packaging, you know they're paying attention to the details on the actual product inside. And that's what we're gonna get here. So we're gonna pull out this Next Belt Titan Precise Fit EDC belt. And well, the presentation continues. As you see here, just so nicely done here, the belt protected, that buckle just protected. You have this little sort of elastic band, which in reality is actually an elastic bracelet, which is cool. Little details inside, just the presentation alone catches your attention. It shows that they are paying attention and that they really care about the look and the feel and the quality of their product. So right away, I am definitely impressed. But as we continue to move forward here, just getting this unraveled, some things to consider. Now, we do actually have to get this configured for our own personal belt size. So what we're gonna do, there's some hardware here, we're gonna slide that aside. This here, the buckle, will take off that little protective strap. Now this is all coiled up, your actual belt, but then the buckle, it is not at this point ready to go. What we need to do is actually remove this so you can see it's literally just slid on the end there, but this is the buckle, nicely powder coated. That's the first thing, so you see nicely powder coated. The hardware on the back and your sort of lever mechanism, this is what allows us to attach it to the webbing. Then you end up with some little recessed um, sort of screw holes there. So nicely machined, powder coating all the way in, not missing anything, nicely coated. A cool little, um, you know, sort of silver accent here that looks nice. Your latch and your mechanism here on the side. So this is your release mechanism. Looks to be very nicely done and also powder coated there. So no problem. Good stiff spring. 
Not so stiff that it's difficult, but just a nice action there that feels really good. And I just, generally speaking, like the way this looks. A good, clean, and classy buckle. Now, something that is already going to start to differentiate next belt from the competition. Remember, this is not brand new technology, but next belt is trying to think of ways to improve the product across the board. So, first things first, we're going to actually pull over here now the core essentials belt. You do need to see this in a little bit of detail to understand. So core essentials, again, very, very nice, but you can see they use rivets. Now, one thing this does have is a little bit of the ability to articulate right there. Well, you'll notice this is riveted, riveted, and riveted. That's fine, no problem. But next belt, thinking a little bit outside the box here, they've actually upgraded to machine screws. So here you can see machine screws, machine screws on both sides. Now you do end up still with one riveted section here that's actually to hold in this uh, you know, latching device, not a big deal. But here, this is the pivot. You do have the ability to really kind of make sure this stays tight. So if it loosened up over time, which I wouldn't expect, you can tighten that back down. Now, something I'm gonna say, that's a pro and it's a con. I don't know if it's a con yet, but the pro is it's serviceable. The con would be if these back out. So I am gonna pay attention to that over time, make sure these don't back out. And they may need just a little bit of Loctite if they didn't come with them. I have no idea. I don't have any experience, but we're certainly going to find out as we wear this over time. As we get into the belt itself, this is gray. So again, this is the Titan Precise Fit belt, but this is in gray. Very nice, just beautiful. And one thing as I flip this over, well, we're going to look at this. You can see it is graduated. So this is your sizing. We're going to have to pay attention to this. And as we go all the way down here, well, you can see this can technically go from 25 inch waist all the way up to a 49 inch waist. So this belt is way longer than it needs to be. But what that means is we need to follow some instructions and cut this down to size. Now, real quick, back to the core essentials. As you take a look inside here, the key feature being that ratchet technology, this is quarter inch adjustments. So every four clicks uh, within the inch, you kind of get that adjustability. Most standard belts, you really only get adjustability on the inch. Never mind this where you get the quarter inch adjustment, which is fantastic. But pay attention to the fact that the track here is gray. Now, gray is the color you'll generally see on core essentials belts. They do have their own molded tracks, but on a number of other brands ratcheted belts, you will see black. In some cases, black is an indication that it may be an outsourced ratchet strap. But in the case of next belt, as we look at this here, they intentionally go with red. Well, why is it red? It's red on the inside because they have their own ratchet track. This is made from their own molds. It's their own process. And the plastic is maybe a little bit of a different composition from their competition. So whether or not it's better, I personally can't say. I mean, it's really one of those time will tell type of things. Of course, Next Belt is going to tell you that it's superior. I can't verify that myself, but I will definitely know over time if either one of these have problems, you know, between the Next Belt or the Core Essentials, or if I just get some impressions. But generally speaking, the red looking good. I like it. It has a nice pop against the gray. This gray, very nice. I love the ribbing. It's just a good look. Looks like your typical nylon webbing belt, but of course, being a gun belt, it's gonna be stiffer. So a nice stiff core on the inside here holds it very firm. This is gonna be fantastic for everyday wear or for the gun range. 
This here is an inch and a half webbing. So as you can see here, comparing it against the core essentials, literally the exact same webbing size. So inch and a half webbing and next belt does offer a number of different styles. So whether it's nylon, whether it's leather, ton of different styles, things that are sort of more subdued and less tactical looking things that are very classy. They actually started business with golf belts and they do have some that have built in like divot repair tools right into the buckle. So very cool. Next belt doing a fantastic job, but at this point, let's start to get this sized up and I'll see how this works out in terms of getting the buckle fit onto the belt itself. Now, as we take a look at the inside of the belt here, you'll see it says only use EDC labeled buckles when carrying a firearm. So that's something worth noting. You could potentially swap out buckles on this, but they're advising to only use the EDC labeled buckles, which is what we have here. And then it says add four inches to your pant size and cut on the dotted lines. Well, what I can tell you is you definitely want to be a little bit careful because once you cut this, you have cut this. Now, personally for me, my waist size does vary between I'd say a 32 and a 34 inch waist size. 33 is usually a pretty safe place for me to land. So 33 inches plus four means I'm cutting at 37 inches. So as I identify here, moving up the belt, here is the 37 inch mark. So I'm gonna go to 38 just for this example to make sure I don't mess myself up. I'm gonna go to 38, see how this fits, and then adjust from there. Getting on this with good sharp scissors, no problem. This should be just fine. So cutting at the 38 inch mark, nice and square. The more square you cut this, the better off you're gonna be. And this is definitely stiff. So I'm gonna come at it from a couple of angles and hopefully match up my cut just square on that. There you go, no problem. And as we take a quick look at this, you can see you end up with the outer nylon and then on the inside you end up with your stiff core so that core is what prevents this from being crushed so you cannot crush it yet at the same time it still has a little flexibility and the ability to kind of twist with your movement which is nice so next belt doing a nice job with their overall construction and another thing that i do want to point out before i go too far nicely stitched no stitches out of place Everything literally perfect, made it up very well, so very nicely done. That is definitely an indication of quality. Just when every stitch is in the perfect place, that makes a big difference in my opinion. Now this is where the hardware comes into play. Next belt sending the hardware. So here you have just a few things. Some instructions if you need it, and then a couple of screws. You end up with this Allen key here, so the hex key, and they actually do send a little bit extra, so two that you need and then an extra, and what I like to see, that's awesome, subtle, but makes a difference, some blue Loctite, so check that out. Thinking ahead and pre-coating these in Loctite, I like the attention to detail. Not a required step, but for me, I am gonna burnish the ends here, just get rid of some of the sort of excess melt that down which i think is going to help in the overall like long term so here you go just getting that nice and finished off and you can see my cut here maybe not quite as square as i would like but i do suspect i'm going to cut this down again so we're just going to roll with it for now getting this buckle and sliding it in here you can see that's a fat sort of tight fit there no problem it will go in but that was definitely tight and that's not a bad thing tolerances seem to be very tight which is good it's not a bad thing like i said looks real good has a nice finished look to it and you basically take this lever and squash it down now if i was done with this all in i would take these screws and I would put these set screws into place to finish this off. But before I go too crazy, let's get this on and see if this is the right size. 
Now you can see this has definitely been in storage for a while. It's very coiled up. So this has a little bit of a, I guess I'd say like a memory to it. Not a big deal, but it's gonna make it just a little bit difficult to get it on the first time around. As I continue to wear this through time, it should improve. I'm not too concerned with that at all, just an observation. And as we get this routed around, here we go. So as I fit this through the front of the buckle, sliding that into place, now it is gonna engage the ratchet. You can hear engaging that ratchet and pulling this down, feeling very good. But what I can tell you is far too much material. For me personally, I would really like this to land closer to about here which for me is going to be just about perfect. And even if I do choose to use this for the firearms application, I do have the ability to loosen this up. And with the webbing ending about here, that should be just fine. Right now I have way too much of a tag end, so I could tuck that underneath, but I, I will never need this amount of belt. So one inch is kind of on me. Uh, just for really cutting it a little bit longer than I originally thought. But the rest of it, I just think that these companies have you cutting these belts a little bit long. That happened here with the next belt. That was also the case with the Core Essentials. This, I ended up basically cutting off everything down to my waist size. So where I'm a 33 inch waist, I ended up cutting the belt literally exactly on the 33 inch mark. That's probably going to be the case here. So I'm going to cut it down and adjust. Now the other problem is if I don't get this sized right, I actually kind of run out of track. This right now is on the very last notch on the track. So I have no more adjustability in tightness. What I'd prefer is to actually land the belt when it lands on that ratchet system more close to the middle section of the track so not on one end not on the other but more towards the middle because at that point i have a good amount of adjustability in both directions so if you don't get this size the right way you kind of lose some of that advantage so what i'm going to do is pretty much at this point get it back to where i think it feels about listen to how nice that ratchet sounds too by the way very very precise click which i like but again, if I get this to about where I need it, I know I'm going to be trimming out about that much. So just going to measure that up real quick and then figure out exactly where I land, retrim this, and we'll get this buckle back into place. And so at this point, I did cut five full inches off of this. I probably could have gone to six. And so in my opinion, even though this goes against their instructions, my personal opinion is literally just to cut this at your belt size. So, I mean, if you typically wear a pant size 32 inches or cut it at 32, if you wear a 34, cut it at 34. Again, that's my opinion. Don't want to give you bad advice, but I think you're going to find that there's more than enough excess if you cut this per their instructions. So at this point, I'm going to formally install the buckle again. Just a last double check on this. It should be about right size wise. And if it is, I'll get those set screws in here. And so now at this point, you can see this is more appropriately sized. This is just about perfect. So I'm definitely happy with this. I have more than enough. I mean, I should realistically cinch this down just a little bit for my current waist size. That's gonna be nice and firm and secure. My pants will not go anywhere. It's literally impossible for these to pull down. If I had a firearm, I can easily just get right underneath on this mechanism, release the belt, sort of loosen that up and get it tucked in here, no problem. And this you can see at this point, again, an appropriate amount of tail. Not a big deal, that's just gonna be pretty much about perfect. And this is definitely looking good. So at this point, I'm in pretty good shape. Now, in terms of concealed carry, I definitely can get my holster in here, no problem. Again, inch and a half webbing, that's gonna be just fine. And my clip fitting over there perfectly. At this point, getting my firearm and installed into the holster, that works out very well. Nice and easy, the ability for me to get on the firearm, no problem. 
and you can see not too much in the way of competition of space. Now keep in mind the fact that if you had a different style holster, I do sometimes carry one that needs to bridge the belt. You will need to take the buckle and spin it off to the side and kind of get that more oriented onto your hip. So I'm gonna do that as a test and we'll see how that goes. But for a typical appendix carry, pretty straightforward no additional mag holder so this is just fine and you can see here that works out pretty nice good rigidity on the belt withdrawing the firearm it's not pulling too much it's actually working out just fine holding my holster right and into place to allow me to extract the firearm and also get it back into place safely so working effectively as a gun belt that's awesome and so if you had a wider holster and you were carrying pretty much like a sidecar with a spare magazine and you needed a little bit more space, you can definitely cant the belt off to the side. I've had no problem with this. This works out just fine. But to give you the example, now this is a little bit of a wider holster here. It ends up with sort of these two clips, which in reality would not have the ability to effectively span the entire width of the buckle. So here you can see getting that on the front now again similar where this fits just fine now this is actually not set up with the weapon light and my holster does require the weapon light for appropriate retention but at the same time you can see that goes down and into place and as this sits here the ability to get on that again not a perfect setup I should probably have this more appropriately outfit for the demonstration but you get the idea so overall working out very well the next belt titan very nice now just some final subtleties the next belt here you can see the end just finished off real nice with this little piece of and I, it's probably plastic but it could also be leather i can't tell that might actually be a nice thick piece of leather there on the end and then sort of beveling this down to help you getting it installed into the buckle but also it just looks good nicely stitched very well done just a little bit of a nicer finish touch than on the core essentials it's subtle but the little things do matter and the only other thing worth noting the difference between the two of these i do find the core essentials latch mechanism a little easier to get on while you're wearing it as you look here the actual mechanism on the next belt, it's very nice, and don't get me wrong, and it's also very low profile and sort of snag proof, but it doesn't extrude. So it's a little bit more difficult to find it and then get your finger on there and push it back. It's just going to take a little bit more practice, but again, just seeing the difference on the core essentials, it very much does just extrude off the end of the buckle there, so very easy to get on and then again versus the next belt which is just a little more flush to the buckle itself it's a subtlety not a big deal it's just something to note and to get used to and so the final step for me is now that i am confident in the fit i do need to get these set screws into place so as you can see here these set screws are going to go right in here again this does come with the hardware and the tool that you need now if this is anything like on the core essentials i do need to be careful you can potentially strip these a little bit you need to bear down push down and drive this down and into the nylon you can do it it just takes a little bit of effort so i'm going to do that off camera and that will be set into place and as you can see here no problem very flush very easy and no problem at all and just to point out the last thing remember what we said next belt advising if it's not marked EDC, not to use these for firearms. And you can see there that EDC stamp. So there we go. Next belt, the Titan precise fit. Awesome. I love it. And so there you have it, a look at the next belt, Titan Precise Fit EDC belt. Again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Next Belt for providing this for review. Very nice. I do greatly like it. A lot of attention to detail. You can tell these guys really do care. So all the way from the very beginning, just that awesome presentation through the details in the belt, their attempt and hopefully success in 
engineering this to a higher standard over the competition. Now, again, that's going to only prove itself over time. I do think there are some things about this that I do prefer over, say, for example, the core essentials and a couple of things, maybe not so much. I do kind of like the mechanism on the core essentials a little bit better, but overall, that's just a subtlety. I know I'll get used to this over time. It's going to be just like the belt I wear every day. I love the look of this. Very nicely done. And the fact of the matter that they have so many different choices, there really will be a belt for everybody. So between the different buckles, the different materials on the belt itself, the fact of the matter that some of them are really intended for golf, say, for example, and you have like the divot tool in there. I think it's just really neat and I like the way these guys think. So overall, next belt, nicely done. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, check me out on my primary channel, my Outer Limitless channel. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and the backpacking genre, and all the gear that goes with it. So from your outerwear and belts like this, EDC gear, knives, axes, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.